Well, hospital Porter's Pride and Dignity. Stop the New World Order yet again. Um, it's now lunchtime on Sunday. Um, and uh, I've just been hearing a Dr. David Taylor talking about the case of the Hexham Heads. No, uh, that's apparently that's a punk rock band from Northumberland. You know, I didn't know that, but um, that's it. but uh, but um, the Hexham Heads, Heads is actually also it's a very very peculiar phenomenon. Uh, what happens is in, in a, it's just a normal semi-detached house in a place called Hexham in England. I don't know exactly where in England. Um, I can't remember. But um, there were some people were digging in the garden one day in 1976, and they came across these two small stone heads carvings about them just enough to fit in a hand in one hand so it's all a tennis ball size and um, um, when, as, soon as, as soon as they unearthed these heads from the garden and brought them in the house all hell broke loose apparently um, there was a run they had a run of bad luck hello it's one of my fellow delegates there and um, they had a run of bad luck and um, strange things happened for instance strange sort of um, Therianthropic apparitions appeared, so it was sort of half man, half animal. Um, there was a half man, half wolf, which of course is best known as a werewolf. But there was other things like um, a half man, half sheep appeared in the house, terrorised the family. Well, the family were managed just went on and took the heads and they gave them to a researcher, and I'm, I think I imagine they were quite glad to see the back of them. Um, but the thing is that that, res that researcher had a run of bad luck. Um, you know, he had a car crash and he was badly injured, things like that. And so he moved them and put them under his desk at work. Anyway, um, guess what happened? Um, something very similar. The, the, the company he worked for went bust. The, um, there were several several of the people there got divorced. Some of them were, went off on went off sick. Um, they suffered from depression, things like that. Oh, this is nice here. It's a, it's a lovely tree. They're around the back of the auditorium now, and um, and um, things like that. So basically, the researcher lent it to somebody. Just wanted to get them away. Lent it to some people who basically they kept it in their house and then they put it in a shoebox in their garden shed and they buggered off. So the heads are now lost. Um, if the new owners of the house are not commenting and we think they may have thrown them away. Um, if they did, in a way I don't blame them. I and mean, if I, you know, because everyone who comes into contact with these heads ends up with some very, very bad things happening to them. Um, including one guy who had a heart attack and died. Now I, um, I want to get rid of them, but I wouldn't want to pass them on to someone else. I wouldn't want to just give them to someone else. I feel bad about that. So if they threw them away, I don't blame them. What these heads are, no one really knows. I mean, um, unfortunately they're not they're missing now, so they can't, this guy, David Taylor, wants to date them, find some way to find out exactly how old they are, which will give us a clue where they come from. The carving of stone heads is, um, is not unheard of. I mean, it's, um, it's a part of Celtic culture. So, um, Celtic culture from before the Roman conquest. And that's very interesting. I'll come on to that in a minute. But I mean, I think the whole situation with the heads and people getting bad luck as a result could simply be another. I mean, I'm someone like um, Dr. Paul uh, Rogers, who spoke about coincidence and misunderstanding of coincidence. Arts theatre. Nice. Um, they would interpret it as, oh, well, it's just a coincidence. But you know what I'd like to say to you, Paul Taylor, if we ever find the heads, you have them. You take them off somebody's hands and you keep them in your house, mate. I wonder if he's so keen then. Hmm. Anyway, as I said, the stone heads, um, the, the emergence of stone heads, the carving of stone heads, um, it seems like the Celtic people uh, used to do that. Um, the Celts, of course, being the ancestors of the Scots and the Irish and the Welsh um, and many other, you know, you, they very early uh, pre Illuminati unit. Um, European culture. Now, um, the, the thing about them being Celtic, the thing about them Celtic is especially interesting because, as I've said before, if you watch my film uh, Boudicca, My Queen, uh, this country, Britain, was a battleground at the time of the Roman conquest. 
It's very rarely you can actually pinpoint the, the moment where the Illuminati takes over a particular part of this world. But this is one of those moments in Britain, and it was when it was the Roman conquest, the end of the Iron Age and the beginning of the Roman period, about 2,000 years ago. Um, and so, I mean, I, I can't help feeling there may be some... There may be some link between the presence of some pre-Illuminati artefacts turning up in an Illuminati-occupied society. I'm not sure about that, but I do get that sense, that kind of feeling. I don't know if you share it, my Panamo TV viewers. Um, let me know if you do. I'll have to think about this for a while, because I'm not sure what to say about it, but there's something, there's some sort of significance there, because I said the Romans came in, and they, they, the Romans were the, the front for the Illuminati, but we lived in a pre-Illuminati society before then. That is the Iron Age Celtic society. Although, which was not Illuminati occupied. Although there, it was Illuminati influence, there were Illuminati um, element, cultural elements here before the Romans, and no doubt their personnel had infiltrated our society beforehand, as they did in many other places. But it was not an Illuminati-controlled society. There's a big difference between the two. Anyway, I better get in because it'll be time for the next speaker in a minute. Thanks for watching her Panwo TV, and I'll see you later.